Last week we saw Divios pick up Wrath in the solo lane as the first relic in the SPL. After that the question came up quite often, if Wrath as a relic in solo lane makes sense, if it's strong, if it's meta now, if it should be picked, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. First of all, we need to understand what the concept behind Wrath in solo lane is. What you're trying to achieve is to get pressure in the lane as early as possible. You're going to be able to clear your camps really, really fast. You're going to be the first ones to lane if the enemy doesn't have Wrath. And that way you're just going to have push advantage from the first wave on. You're then going to get the elementals in many scenarios. Maybe even mid camps if you rotate further and have pressure for the second wave as well in, in many of the cases. So overall, in those regards, it's very advantageous to have Wrath. And that's not all. Additionally, at later stages of the game or after the initial clearing, you will always have more pressure when it comes to either securing your own blue buff or even invading the enemy blue buff and trying to steal that, which can really change the pace of a solo lane. If you get multiple blue buffs on your enemy and the character he's playing is very dependent on it, then that can allow you to bully the enemy out of lane very, very much. Another benefit is in the fact that you can run less aggressive solo laners or less clear focused solo laners better. For example, Sobek, simply because they get aid in clearing at least the camps and that can help. Back in season one, we would actually see Hand of the God, which is what it was called back then, picked up quite often in solo lane because it still cleared three minions. Now it will no longer give you minion pressure, it, just, it simply doesn't do anything for that, it will simply just hit a single minion, but it still gives you that camp pressure, which can be really important, depending on the matchup. At the same time, you're sacrificing the option to back to base and come back quickly, or come back quickly after dying, as you won't have teleport for the first 12 levels. These 12 levels, however, can be very crucial for the outcome of the game. If you consider that somebody could be able to teleport over to the Gold Fury and you wouldn't be able to rotate because you don't have teleport, then you can see how a problem can arise here if the team snowballs off the gold that they get from that. Now, what you have to keep in mind with this is that when Divios picked it, there was a reason to it. And this reason is that DJ Pernicus was pretty much always playing Bastet when he picked Wrath. And this actually has a connection. So what the plan or the concept behind this is, is that the enemies knew that he was going to pick Wrath over and over again in order to have that lane pressure. This is why the enemy would go for Wrath as well in order to prevent getting out pressured and just keeping up with the pressure that was created. So this was partially a mind game. A mind game that you cannot play in a ranked or wherever when your enemy doesn't know that you're going to pick Wrath. What this led to was Teleport being picked up as a second relic later on, so around level 12. Obviously at that point Bastet wouldn't be able to split push all that much yet, but Teleport was a must as a second relic because of Bastet and because of the threat that comes from her split pushing late game requiring you to have Teleport and usually it is simply on the solo laner. What that led to is that the enemy solo laner would not have any room for counter build items, for example, weakening curse against healers or anything team oriented because he had sacrificed one relic just to keep up with the early pressure and the second relic to have teleport. Obviously Devious did the same at the same time, but as the team was basically built around it, it was rarely a major problem and that allowed them to, to do the strategy over and over. And that also kind of shows why the strategy may not always be valid for everyone. You can obviously play the strategy and you can try and get ahead that way and it can work, but it doesn't necessarily force the enemy to pick up Wrath as well if they don't know what you're picking beforehand. And while you may be able to bully them in lane, they may still get two different relics, so you're losing one of the major benefits that came with this strategy. The other thing that is worth keeping in mind here is that this is on a very high level and on a very high level of play a clear a, a clear advantage of a short time frame will mean a lot it's a huge difference if you come into lane three seconds later or not and the players that play on this high level are able to emphasize off such little leads in, in comparison 
they, they will be able to snowball that way, just keep up the lead for, for an extended period of time because of the experience and therefore basically have pressure for a long time off a little win. In lower ranked games or in casual games, you will mostly not find that level of efficiency. As such, a two second lead may still mean something, but it may also not be as well executed in the long run. The, the lead that is gained may just be lost a bit down the road due to a misplay, uh, something that just happens less often on high levels of play. At the same time, you may be more dependent on team relics, uh, especially if your team doesn't perform as well as you're hoping for early on. And the early pressure may not be all that worth because many games in lower levels of play are simply dragged out. And when they're dragged out, that means you're getting to a late game. And in late game, your team fight relics will be very, very important. As the, the teams just don't close off games as efficiently as they do in a coordinated SPL setting or competitive setting. So to break this down once more, Wrath can be good. It can really help those solo laners that otherwise struggle with clearing, for example, Sobek or Xing Tian. It can help you give some pressure in places where you wouldn't otherwise get them. It will allow you to snowball a little bit off of that if you make it work. And it will put the enemy solo laner in an awkward spot if he doesn't know how to deal with it. At the same time, it's going to give you various downsides if the game drags out. It will give you issues as soon as it's about some kind of rotational thing where, where the enemy rotates out and you're not going to get the same benefits as in competitive from it, both from this perspective of making gain out of such small leads as well as the enemy knowing about the build beforehand as they simply won't. So all in all, if you like Wrath and you want to build it, go for it. If you're going to use it to secure Fire Giant or Gold Fury or stuff like that, then that's also a very valid purpose to get it on a solo laner. But if you're just building it because you think it's stronger now, you're not really getting the point of how it's, it's supposed to be used. In most situations, in most scenarios, I would still recommend going for teleport simply because it gives you a lot more safety in the solo lane and a lot more flexibility on where to go and when to back and you are less punished for a misplay if you go for the less risky choice when it comes to relics. I hope that clears up the questions that were there regarding this relatively new but kind of old strategy looking back at season 1 when the item was different. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you all tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out. <laughs>